It's Tour Truck Tuesday. Welcome back to the channel. Those of you that are new here, be sure to hit subscribe. Let's get this thing ripping. What's happening here? Well, I'm inside the tour department at TaylorMade Golf, Carlsbad, California, and I'm whipping myself up a brand new three stroke forward that we're going to go through today as we progress out onto the range at the Kingdom. Tip trimming first off, then measuring the butt length and how long this thing's going to be cut in a USGA ruler. You move on to grind away the paint on the tip section. We use this belt here in the tour department. It's important to get rid of the paint. So for this section, the epoxy that you're going to mix will simply adhere to both the shaft and the golf head. We use one part honey, two part black with some glass beading. That ensures that the shaft goes perfectly centralized into the housing. Mix it up. It's all in the mixing. The longer you do it, you get the right consistency. It's about ratios, honey to regular glue. Then you simply pop the glue into the housing, into that loft sleeve, ensure that you get everything bonded together and line it up. You want your graphics to look perfect. I'm testing out a new KBS golf shaft here, still making sure I've got everything aligned where I would like it to be. Unscrew the head and then you're going to pop it into this device here. It's called a curing cell. It's going to heat that at a certain temperature for a period of time. Once bonded, it's ready to rock and roll, other than the fact, of course, you need a grip and swing weight. Moving over to the gripping station, I've done a fair few thousand of these in my time. I'm just one tape. I do like to go with two full grip loads of solution. That's a lot. If I'm on tour working quickly, I would only use one. The clip that we use at TaylorMade enables us to move the grip down easily over the solution so it dries quicker by using that it's easier to get on measure that grip length that's what I was doing there clean up a tidy job is a good job then it's over to this the most important part the swing weight machine and I just want to get the balance point of the head to the golf club to ensure there's enough mass in the head so it plays the way I want it at this point we're really close to finishing I will move and put in what's called a hot melt plug which you'll see me bang against the desk here and press to get that in. That's the final piece. Once I know the weight is secure, then we simply head to the range for testing. And here it is out here with me on this beautiful range, the Kingdom Carlsbad, California. We're gonna test this bad boy out today. But before we do that, hit subscribe and hit the bell notification button. I put one video out every Tour Truck Tuesday. It came to me though, while I was making this golf club, that maybe you guys still aren't 100% sure how to test these fairway woods and what this loft sleeve can do for you in addition to the back sliding weight. Are you aware that we can tweak that, move it in and out of the garage there just to adjust ball flight? So this is how I might look at that. It's going up against my gamer. Yeah, it's a new toy, I wanna to try it out, but the gamer has been very reliant to me. Now take a look at these two golf clubs as you look down. You're gonna see in the Stealth 2 that there's a slightly larger footprint as you put the club down versus the Stealth 2 Plus in this forward. These both are forwards. I have managed to bend the loft on this one a little stronger and change the lie angle. So it does suit me and I must admit, I'm a big fan of it. I like it a lot. Has the V-Steel sole in it. What does that mean, Trotty, what you're talking about? As you take a closer look and you look at the sole of this golf club, it does go through. If you happen to get some turf interaction, it goes through the turf a little bit better if needs be. I'm going at the street lamp. Those of you who are a regular viewer, you'll know that's my target with these slightly longer golf clubs. Let's just put a marker down for us to give us something to go off. Good golf shot off the turf. I like that one. That's a good hit. Great start, golf shot that, good flight. We're into a little bit of breeze now. There is that turf interaction slightly. You could see that as it went through. We have a little bit of it marked onto the face there and also just slightly into the V-steel sole. So that will have helped that golf ball get into the air. Let's take a little look at the numbers. I'm gonna bang it on to normalize first off to take the wind out of play. 248 giving me a carry number. And if I go into the shot itself, you can see that the total was coming up as 270. That is a decent hit for me there. Spin rate, 334, which I'm a big fan of. 
off of the fairway like that. I would like it a little bit lower if I was going off a tee peg, but that's something that I can deal with. And then just into that breeze, 234. So let's lay down one with the new club. Shaft change in this, it's gonna be the KBS TD Tour Driven 70 Cat 5. They run their flexes in categories. So Cat 5 is gonna be an X. You'll notice on the video, I tipped it quite a long way when it came to looking at that golf club. Whenever you tip a golf club like that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna probably make it play a bit firmer, but also take a bit of the spin off of it. The only reason I did it in the build, I don't have much history about using this golf shaft. I don't know a ton about it. I saw someone hit it in a previous video that I made, and I thought it looked pretty good for a fairway wood. Again, look at the player's view. Nice and open, weight all the way back. I'm running at 234 and then normalized on my carry, 248. That was a good hit. So this is gonna have to go some to keep up with that, but we'll see how much that loft sleeve can change things. It's a great start. I mean, that is to me, that's gonna be apples for apples for sure. It is apples for apples. 233, 268. What's the spin rate? 36. So a little bit higher spin. That's where, and I think this could be the quickest video in Trotty Golf YouTube history. That's where you move that into there. You shimmy that. Wait for that noise. That felt really good. Really, really good. Really good as, as in, it's one of those surprises where it's a good one, but you're not totally in love with it because you don't actually want to change your three wood. This is the problem of working here and having access to all this stuff. I've just moved that weight forward. Gonna give me a lower spin. See if we can get this as good. I love this head. Really nice looking head. Flatter ball flight. Three, three, spin came down. Good. I mean, that, that is the setting right there that I would play this on for sure. And if we look at three, six on the previous shot on the spin, three, four. I mean, I can't think of a better example as to what this tech does. Yes, it's fractional. Apex differences, we had 83 feet, 78. So brought the flight down as it should do and given me a slightly hotter ball flight. Now feel has changed. I can't tell you your feel when it comes to your fitting, but you can own it yourself. It felt much more solid with the weight at the front, much more of a heavy, heavy hit. I like that though. I like the responsive golf shaft. I like the color. Believe it or not, that's important. Get that all the time out on the tour. I don't like the color. I don't like the color. I like how open the blade sits. Jumped up 252 on a toe hit. All right, so let's get on with making the video rather than me just testing the golf club, which is whew, desperately what I wanna do. But let's show here how diverse this can be. I can move the tour truck in my pocket. It's a two degree sleeve, but I'm gonna go all the way to higher. Now this is gonna sit with the face a little left and a little closed, but I just wanna show you Again, get the click. I'm gonna bang this back to where it was because I think I'm gonna be dialed either forward or just back a bit from middle. But again, let's go testing all the way back. Now those apexes were around, what, 83-ish? Now let's see if we can tweak some yardage off this. So if you're playing a golf course where you wanna hit a certain number, notice how the grip has gone all the way around. Graphics are aligned, they've done a nice job there. But we're working at it's around the 237 on the carry mark. I jumped on a couple there and got it further, which I wanted to test. But let's see if we can just really weaken this flight, take this apex up, almost hit a couple of golf clubs in one. Look at that. That's crazy. 220. 220 carry. 240 total. 5-1 spin. I mean, do you need to see anything else? How versatile is that? That's crazy. I don't do that enough. It actually sits pretty good as well. Sits really good. 
So now you've almost got a five wood. I can't believe that's one golf club. 225, unreal. 225, 243 normalized, 251 total. I lost 20 yards, 20 yards. And then obviously you can go middle ground then if you want to, but that, that to me blows me away. That face angle is actually really good. And that wasn't too spinny. Okay, middle ground. So you go to your standard, get the click, garage weight, middle. Check that face angle, money. I like that because that was a toe ball and it hasn't gone left blinker up exactly 10 yards. Loft is everything with golf clubs. You've got to remember that. If you change the loft, it's everything. Loft and then garage weight dials in the spin a bit for you. I mean, there's three different golf shots, three perfect different distances and one golf club. Two fifty. It's consistent. It's the only club you're going to need. There's so much you can do with it. Good turf interaction. That's what I was trying to get. I just wanted to feel it through it. Two fifty. I'm going to put this back to where I potentially would play it, just because I'm a fiend for open face angles, and I'm going to go so lower on the loft sleeve and then middle weight, not gonna move that. Get your clicks, I'm a multi-click guy. Something to consider which might seem weird as well, these graphics, see how they're so, you can't even see them on the camera I would imagine, but this is so symmetrical and cylindrical that when you do test golf clubs, and I don't even know if golf shaft companies think about this, but you'll notice the stuff I play, I like the graphics out the way, and with this it works. That's something just to call out, keep an eye on it. Let's see how this goes. And again, that's the toe hit hung in there. Important to me that low spin, but dispersion is where I want it. Always good to throw a peg in the mix. I just get a bit more out of it with that weight forward. Keep in mind, we're into the breeze a little bit today. Do you know what I mean? That, that's the one. But it's a bit of it is the breeze. That's what you got. That's why I like normalized. That's why I live a lot off normalized. That's 3,400, 251 carry normalized. It's only 230, but it looks great because I know I'm into the breeze. It's something to be aware of when you test your woods. It, this is brilliant for sure. I can't believe the range difference. Hopefully you're getting an understanding of that. If you move it to higher, add loft, lose yardage but you're going to obviously gain spin, but that wasn't too spinny as you saw. If you go to lower, then the face angle goes all the way open. So you can hit so many different things, but that's where it's so versatile. Once you get through this initial test, and as you go into your screen of your summary, you can see your distances. Once you've done that, then it's a case of launch monitor goes off, ball flight comes in, take it to the golf course. But, I mean, for a club I just picked up last week because I saw someone hitting it, it's pretty, uh, pretty impressive stuff. It really is. Check out the Stealth 2 Plus. I currently don't game it. This, I didn't expect this to give it a run, and it might. I do like this because it's bigger, but this is, this is decent too. I got a bit of time to spend here. I'm going to get on with that session. If you want to see more of this, simply subscribe, hit the bell button, let me know your thoughts. Hopefully you guys have tested the Stealth 2 Plus. It's a hell of a weapon demonstrated for you just there. And that's how you should go through all the gears when it comes to testing yours.